Uh, apply that to everything because everywhere the faith can be brought into it. It's great to have every teacher know the faith, love the faith, and want to help teach the faith. It, it's something that you don't get anywhere else. None of those schools have just this, this joy. It's so full of life. I'm able to look beyond just the, the little fine details of you know science class or math class or history. I'm, I'm able to connect them and look beyond and see what's, what's more. The whole effort of starting Chesterton Academy grew out of the idea of parents simply wanting to pass on their faith. And that's why we're doing this, because, because we, we're trying to live our faith at home, and we want to put our kids in an environment during the school day where that passing on the faith uh, can be continued. You know, what we're trying to develop here is a school that places the faith at the center of the life of the mind. So that's going to inform your, um, your choices about the books that you read, the, the programs that you might bring into the building and not bring into the building. Chesterton says, if, if Christianity is true, it's a truth that affects everything. And I think that's the way we teach at school. That truth affects everything else. People realized that we were giving a very good education and uh, people were seeing that lives were being changed. There, there was this instant uh, feeling that we were doing the right thing. Well, that's the uh, that's the context in which our in which our school operates, the larger network of which we are a part, and the ethos that forms something of the character of our school here at St. Mary's. I want to tell you a, a little more about our school in in particular, and I I want to start by reflecting on recently I so my wife and I live across the street from the school, so I am often the substitute of first resort if a high school teacher is going to be absent for some reason. Um, it's probably going to be me or my wife that, that fills in for them. And so recently I filled in for our philosophy teacher, Mrs. Price. And she gave me a great gift because I got to teach the day that she dealt with Plato's allegory of the cave. This is perhaps the most famous portion of philosophy in all of philosophy. And if I can't make that interesting to kids, I just got to hang up my hat and go on. Um, and it was a real pleasure to teach them to have this table around which we sat. You know, it, it wasn't rows and of desks, but rather a big seminar table that we were sitting around and discussing this over 2,300-year-old text. And if you don't know much about the allegory of the cave, it's Plato gives us a, a clue as to what's going on in, in much of reality with things that are fake and things that are real and how to tell the difference and what's going on, especially with a, especially with a liberal education. And there, so the people are, if you don't know anything about it, there's this, he says, imagine it's a thought experiment. People are down in a cave and they're chained and they're looking face forward at the wall and there are these people behind them using a fire to cast shadows on a wall to manipulate them, and they think that's reality. But they're being controlled and influenced and manipulated by the people behind them who know what's really going on. And the process of education is described, so that, that what it's really an allegory for is the process of education. That, these, that, that someone breaks those chains for you and guides you, sneaks you behind the people controlling the images, takes you up to the surface, where at first you're blinded because it's so bright, but eventually you get used to it and you start to see reality yourself for the first time. Now, Plato's such a genius that it is, of course, in this allegory, it is God who is the sun, the light, from which all truth can be seen, as opposed to the man-made fire which shows us merely the shadows. And so getting this great discussion, we had a great discussion that day, and I asked the students, 
in our world. Plato, you know, he lived such a long time ago. But he's teaching us something. He's trying to teach us something. If we were to translate this allegory into our own lives, what are the shadows in our lives that are being thrown up against the wall that we're supposed to believe are reality, but which are in fact not? And I was so impressed. The students immediately, social media, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, this is not real. These are images being cast on the wall to make us behave in a certain way, to control our opinions, to direct us. Um, so that we don't decide and think for ourselves. And they got it. Um, and it, this experience was just a, an amazing teaching day. It was wonderful. I was high all day after that. <laughs> but it crystallized for me what an honor and a responsibility we have at this school. Because the parents of these students have entrusted us with helping them break those chains and see around those shadows to find their way to the light. And we help the, the parents are primarily the people who do that, but we help them, we're there to help them do that. And that crystallized for me what's so vitally important about this, this model of education, which steeps them in these classical texts. It's emblematic, really, of the whole education that we, that we strive for here, because we want to break the chains that bind us to whatever half-baked thoughts are sort of out there in the air, whatever cliches we get attached to that aren't really our own thoughts but are just sort of transmitted, to really dig deep and think things through for ourselves, to get past the shadows of fakery and manipulation. Now here at the school, so that, that was just a sort of highlight experience for me. Um, and that's one story, but there are many like it. From, you can ask any of our teachers, many of whom are here, about their version of that moment, and they'll have one. And it got me to reflecting on the year that we've had. So we've come a long way since this high school was an idea from Heidi Altman and Patrick Heil and a few other, and Aaron Barda and Kate Barda, and a few other people wanting the classical education that the that the pre-K three through eight was doing to go all the way, finish the thought, right? Finish the work. And, um, but the thing you have to know is that time was two years ago, which means these people were so crazy, they started a school in the middle of a once a century global pandemic. <laughs> it was either Providence or it was insane, right? <laughs> And yet here we are, in the first year there were seven intrepid students. Um, we more than tripled the student body in one year. And we're working on growing it again for the fall. I hope to double it for the, for the fall. So we're, we're seeing, we're being affirmed by that fast growth. Uh, we, we started, also this year, we started a football team. This is Texas, so I probably should have led with that. We have a football <laughs> team. Um, and it was a lot of fun to watch those young men develop and compete uh, in that. We took the students on a stargazing trip to a dark sky area. Texas is so big, we have some places that don't have light pollution, that don't have a lot of city lights to interfere with your view of the stars. Enchanted Rock State Park is one of them. We took the entire student body there to go camping and to put into practice what they were learning in astronomy class. So one of the things that makes us different as a school is we teach astronomy. Um, and we teach it using ancient texts. So they see, they work through the sort of problems because man, for as long as we've been, as long as we have been man, have looked up at the night sky and wondered. And the sky often is less a source of wonder than it once was for us because of all the light pollution. So we take them out to where they can see, really see the constellations. Um, we also had to schedule it around a new moon and football season, so, you know, <laughs> it, it was complicated when we got there. Um, we took them to the Austin Symphony Orchestra. We had a, we had a symphony night, and uh, they performed, as Providence would have it, the symphony was performing Gustav Holst's The Planets. So they had just seen some of these planets in the sky, and they got to hear compositions based on them. Um, they, at Christmas time, helped the Salvation Army raise money for people who weren't going to have a Christmas. 
And then in January, we took 42 people from the parish, nearly the entire student body, to the March for Life in Washington, D.C. Um, to make a pilgrimage there, to go to um, the National uh, Shrine, the Basilica there, for the Mass. And in fact, a photo of our students became, a, it, they, they're now internet famous because of <laughs> a photo of our students. They were wearing their uniforms. And it was used as the main photo for quite a number of news, uh, news stories about the, about the march. And so this is the year that we've had. And they're getting great experiences, and it's a great honor and pleasure to watch them mature. But what it all comes back to, really, is classical learning and Catholic faith. The number one reason that lots of us are involved, and I know this is particularly true for my case, I got involved in classical education um, and in this school because I don't want my children to grow up to be future ex-Catholics. I want to hand on, I want to hand down to them the faith intact. And so, as a nerd, a professional nerd at that, I went looking into the research about how to do that. And what the research shows, it's good that you're all seated because this is going to be a shocker, the number one emphasis or number one influence on whether kids who are raised in Catholic homes stay Catholic as adults is their parents. Um, particularly, for those of us who are men, this ought to be convicting, their dad. Um, and that's true whether it's girl or boy. Their dad. Dad is huge on this front. Um, the number two, though, is the school. Having Catholic education. Having deep, rich Catholic education. We live in a time where all we're in this room of sort of cultural upheaval. It's stormy out there. For our kids to withstand that storm, for their faith to withstand that storm, they need strong, deep, rich faith formation. They need examples to look up to. They need, the, they need to see it as intellectually rich and respectful, not a hobby for the weekend, not something for um, people who are uneducated, but actually the, some of the most brilliant minds in history have been people of faith. They need wisdom, deep learning, and resilience. They need these great books, which is why in our geometry class, they read Euclid, they study Euclid. In our history classes, they read Livy. In, in English, they read Dante, and in philosophy, they study Plato and Aristotle. Our teachers are also an enormous part of this education, of course, because they are the exemplars. They have to be living out the kind of life that we want our kids to aspire to. And so their astronomy teacher is an aerospace engineer. And their art teacher is a, a trained professional iconographer. And she, she trained in Italy. Above all, though, each of those teachers puts Christ at the center of every class because we want Christ to be at the center of every life. Every one of these students, that's our goal. More than anything else, we think they get a great education here. But even more important, honestly, than the books that they read is the faith that we want them to have, that we want to nurture and build up in them. And so that is what we're, that is what we're about, above all. Now, tonight we have a very special guest who knows something about all of that, who has, who has spent a lot more years in it than I have. So she's who you're really listen, here to listen to. Um, and it's my great pleasure to introduce her. So in, in January of 2015, Cecilia Abbott made history by becoming the first Hispanic First Lady of Texas. She's been a teacher, a vice principal, and a principal at several Catholic schools across Texas, including the Cathedral School, another St. Mary's, um, downtown in Austin. And she's also worked in senior health care services. But Mrs. Abbott hasn't only devoted her professional life to helping others, she has done the same in her personal life. She serves on the board of several educational organizations and is a member of many philanthropic groups. Her signature initiative as First Lady combines the two things that she is passionate about, Texas and philanthropy, and she calls it Texanthropy. And through it, she promotes volunteerism and service to others across Texas. 
Mrs. Abbott has also partnered with the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services on a similar initiative, Network of Nurture, to raise awareness about the ways Texans can support the children and families in the state's child welfare system. Mrs. Abbott collaborates with the governor's child sex trafficking team, the Department of Family and Protective Services, and a diverse group of faith leaders across Texas to develop effective strategies to end human trafficking, and as a part of the GRACE or Governor's Response Against Child Exploitation Initiative. Mrs. Abbott is a devoted wife to her husband of 40 years. Our, our governor, Texas Governor Greg Abbott, and she's a proud mother to her daughter Audrey and dogs Pancake and Peaches. Ladies and gentlemen, the First Lady of Texas, Mrs. Cecilia Abbott. Um, I can't tell you how wonderful it is to be here. I just can't even believe what I am witnessing with the children helping today and how beautiful they are. And it's just been so great to be here. Uh, and, and it just has brought so much joy in, at a time where things are extremely <laughs> stressful. Okay. <laughs> so thank you so much for inviting me to be part of this very, very lovely evening. The Catholic Church and Catholic education have always been the center of my life. As a, as a young girl, my favorite place to play was in St. Paul's, the church that was right across the street from our home in San Antonio. It was always such, it was always such a cool and peaceful and welcoming place. And um, Father, I have a confession to make. <laughs> it was also my dog Poncho's favorite place to play. <laughs> So much so that it was not unusual uh, for the announcement to be made at Sunday Mass asking my family to remove our dog from the church from Sunday Mass. So I know my parents were always pretty mortified. Nevertheless, I have been blessed to be involved in Catholic schools for all of my life. Both of my parents were Catholic school educators, and I became part of the Catholic school community as a student at St. Martin Hall, across the street from Our Lady of the Lake in San Antonio. And by the way, that's also where Greg and I uh, were married a little over 40 years ago. Uh, one of the most amazing people I will ever know was my sixth grade teacher, Sister Audrey. She was a role model for faith, in God, for excellence, in teaching, and for service to others. She was a woman of grace, and the mark that she made on my life was truly unforgettable. So much so that Greg and I named our beautiful daughter in her honor. And I'm proud to be the parent of a Catholic school educated student. Audrey went to pre-K uh, at the Cathedral School of St. Mary's in Austin, where I served as principal, and by the way, our wonderful uh, superintendent, uh, Misty Poe, was my teacher and then my assistant principal, so I like to take responsibility <laughs> for great leadership. Uh, but also, she happened to have, the, the funny story behind that is that she had a child at the exact same time I, we adopted our daughter, Audrey, and um, they were three at the same time, so we just thought it was a great idea to start a pre-K-3 program <laughs> at that time. But um, speaking of Audrey, um, on Wednesdays, we would share, my daughter and I would share a very special treat as mother and daughter. We went to dinner together at Chuck E. Cheese. I know, I know you're jealous. I can, I can feel it. Right now. now, Audrey, I was very proud because when she was growing up, uh, she was little, three, four years old in pre-K. Uh, she was always very grateful for everything around her. Mom, look at that tree. Thank you, Jesus, for the tree. And I thought, you know, I just did a good job here. So she was very, very thankful for everything. 
And I was so proud of her because she would always say her prayers and, and, and tell God how thankful she was for what she had. Well, before one of those special Wednesday dinners, as we walked up to our table, we saw the big mouse uh, show up and came to the table. Audrey calmly genuflected. And all of her sweet sincerity said, thank you, Chucky Jesus. So, I got misty and we were back to square one. Now, I know by whatever name we call him, he hears our prayers of gratitude, but I think that might have been the first. <laughs> anyway, I spent several years as a teacher, as an assistant principal, and a principal of Catholic schools uh, here at, in Austin and in Houston. It was truly such a pleasure and an honor to be part of the lives of so many wonderful students, parents, teachers, and local parishioners much like your, your special community here at St. Mary's Catholic School in Taylor. And let me just say, um, I'm sure, as, you, as, as Dr. Seward mentioned, uh, I'm sure it was starting a new high school during the pandemic was no easy feat. But um, I have no doubt that the challenges and the obstacles uh, you have faced and overcome in that time have brought this school closer together and fostered a stronger sense of community. Well, I never imagined during my time as an educator that Greg and I would later be in a position to serve our state as governor and first lady of Texas. Much in life has changed since then, but I am fortunate to continue my involvement with Catholic schools. A Catholic education is not just an education, but it is a family and it is community. And that notion of family and community transcends time and distance. For example, my mother is a daughter of immigrants from Mexico who settled in San Antonio. And my father, comes from an Irish Caucasian family from Michigan who settled in Houston. Both received the same education growing up in their respective Catholic schools because they were both taught by the same order of sisters, and that was the Sisters of Divine Providence, the same order, by the way, um, Sister Audrey belonged to. My parents' Catholic education, my parents' Catholic educations, and the family and community that came with it formed the foundation of their lives and, of course, mine. Now, I'd love to put my teacher's hat back on just for a moment. There are five reasons, now more than ever, I think Catholic schools matter. First, of course, learning matters. And we believe that every child can achieve. Committed teachers and engaged parents setting high expectations create opportunities for students to excel, even with a challenging curriculum. Catholic education keeps important intellectual and cultural treasures alive. How often have the important subjects of history and literature, math and art, along with the appreciation of the great works of the past, given way to nothing more than teaching to some standardized test, or just preparing students for an entry-level job. Work is a noble human endeavor, as Jesus showed us, growing up as a simple, hard-working carpenter. As Pope, or Saint, uh, John, Saint John Paul II has said, all human beings find their vocation in and through work. But we work to live, not live to work. And must we always be mindful of what we are working for. For the weekend, working for the next vacation, for the next paycheck. A Catholic education forms students not merely for work, but for meaningful work within the context of a meaningful life a life spent serving God and neighbor. Pope Francis has said, we are living in an information-driven society which bombards us indiscriminately with data and all treated as being of equal importance and which leads, us, and which leads to remarkable superficiality in the area of moral discernment. 
In response, we need to provide an education which teaches critical thinking and encourages the, the development of mature moral values. To solve tomorrow's problems, we will need today's students to be able to think in new ways. But to think in new ways, they must first be able to think. Appreciating the wisdom of past generations will not keep our students from moving forward uh, creatively on, uh, on their own, quite the opposite. Knowing where they have come from and appreciating the sacrifices made for them by those who came before them are precisely the things that will motivate our students to go forth and be faithful to the gift of their Catholic education. A Catholic education inspires us, not, inspires not only the minds of our students, but also their hearts and their spirits. You are preparing them for a life of belonging, a life of purpose in this world and beyond. And of course, faith is important. A good Catholic education inspires not only our minds, but our hearts and our spirits. Without faith, our achievements, our purpose, and our character will ultimately be short-lived and hollow. And finally, enlarging the circle of our family is important. Catholic schools teach us not to withdraw from the, the, from the culture at large, but to go out into the world and act as leaven in, in society like yeast that you put in dough to help it rise. A Catholic education is about discovering joy and studying the world because we love it and we find it full of wonder. Thank you for drawing the circle of our, of our family, of our community, larger. You have my constant prayers and my deepest gratitude and respect for all that you are doing. And I ask your prayers for Greg and all of the leaders of our state and our country as they may gain strength from our larger family and from Christ's love. Thank you so much for all that you do. May God bless you and your families, and may he forever bless the great state of Texas. Thank you. That I need to that I need to thank that I want to take take just a moment to do so. One is our teachers who work with these great students. Another is the decorations in here tonight are beautiful. This room, I don't know if this room ever looks so good. And Elizabeth Burgess and Erica Collette get the credit for all the I looked out last night, actually, as I was locking up our house at 10 o'clock or 10.05, there were still cars here, so thank you all very much for that. Um, Keo O'Keefe, Philip Zimmer Hansel, Aaron Farda, and Omar Gonzalez, thank you all for the work that you did to help get people here, to help let everyone know about this. And I'd particularly like to thank our, our Gold Level sponsors, you may have seen there, uh, their logos on the on the screen on the slideshow. Without this, without them, we could have done this. Um, that's James Schwartz, realtor, uh, Loveline, Heil Holmes, uh, Teddy, and Rita Spears. The night and the Knights of Columbus. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Uh, I see the desserts coming out now. That's great news. Um, I have another speaker to, to introduce. We've got two more tonight. Um, and this is a very special speaker, especially for a cultura vitae, that's Latin for culture of life. And that the culture of life, everyone knows that the pro-life movement is one of 
our Catholic ministries that's very close to our heart. And it may not be obvious what the connection to education is, but I hope that what, what we've seen on the screen and, and heard here tonight helps elaborate the larger context that to build a real thorough, top to bottom, all the way down culture of life means living a certain way and being educated in a certain way. And that that's what this school is about. That's what tonight is about. And so our, our next speaker is actually not speaking as one of the most sought after pro-life speakers in the country, but as a mom. Because she's a mom of lots of our students. <laughs> But one of our high school students. And so I'd like to ask Abby Johnson to come to the stage.
What happens here at St. Mary's is unique, it is genuine, and it is really, really Catholic. There's a, a G.K. Chesterton quote, it says, the true soldier fights, not because he hates what is in front of him, but because he loves what is behind him. There are so many things in our world today that we can hate. There are many, many things coming for our children. And I say that all the time, you know, I, I feel like I spent a lot of years in my life working for the wrong side. Um, I spent many years of my life working for the enemy, working against God. And I feel like at this point, Satan's sort of done with me. I'm sort of old news. He's like, you're, you're old, you're washed up, I'm done with you. But see, Satan's not coming for us. The enemy is not coming for us. The enemy is coming for our children. And so, I don't have my children here. I don't believe you have your children here because you're so much worried about hating what's out there, but you love and you want to protect your children, and that's why you have them in here. I, I want to sort of just, I guess, brag on my daughter a little bit, and she'll be embarrassed, but... <laughs> <laughs> or maybe not. She actually really likes attention, so I don't know she's probably liking this. I think most of you probably know my story. For those of you that don't, I um, I spent eight years of my life working inside of a Planned Parenthood abortion facility. I was I was the abortion clinic director there, and for the first three years of Grace's life, she spent her life growing up inside of that abortion facility. And she went to the clinic with me and she spent her years growing up there and she spent her years going to uh, pro-choice, pro-abortion rallies with me, holding signs saying things like, pro-life is anti-woman. And she held the pro-choice signs with me as a child, not really knowing what she was doing, of course, but just because I was throwing this propaganda at her. And I feel like only because of God's grace is she the young woman that she is today. And I feel like one of the reasons that she is such a strong advocate for life is not only because of me, not only because of her dad, but because of the amazing Catholic education that she has received here at St. Mary's and throughout the diocese and the Catholic schools that she has gone to. Because at, here at St. Mary's, they are proud to proclaim that they are pro-life. Because our church is pro-life. They are proud to proclaim the tenets of the Catholic Church boldly wherever they go. And that's why I am so proud to send my children here to this school. That's why I want my children. That's why I'm so glad that we have a high school here. That's why I want all of that's why we're moving to Taylor. That's why we're uprooting our family and coming here because this is where I want my children to grow. This is where I want my children to graduate. This is where I want my children to be rooted because what happens here is authentically Catholic. Woo! If you're a St. Mary's parent, I know you love this school. As a Catholic, I, I do feel personally responsible to tell my friends with, with children about this school, and I do. And I would ask for a discount because of all the people that are enrolled here, but I'm already getting one with the cap, so. Um, but because the school is so unique and so incredible, we are growing at an incredible rate. I think one that 
maybe Heidi is even surprised by. I think one that that the administration is even surprised by. I mean, we are we are growing, we are expanding, we are busting at the seams here at St. Mary's, and that is a beautiful problem. But that means we need your money. <laughs> and you know that's why you're here, right? So, you didn't get that cash bar for free, okay? So, or not a cash bar, an open bar for free. Uh, we need you all to invest in our children. We need you to invest in, in the really amazing thing that's happening here, the really unique thing that is happening here at St. Mary's. And we need you to invest in the future of Catholic education. These kids that are serving us tonight, this is the future of the Catholic Church. And I know that because I have every confidence in the world that these kids that are here, these are not going to be the kids that leave the church. These are going to be the kids that stay. These are going to be the kids that reform the church. These are going to be the kids that stay, that make the church even better, that make the church stronger. These are going to be the kids that fight for our church. And so we need more of that. We need more of them. And we don't, I mean, we've got some portable buildings now to do it in. <laughs> And so it's not sexy and it's not fancy, but that's how we're going to do it. But we need you all to help us. We need you all to help us expand and to help us grow. And so I think somewhere we have some donation card. I wasn't really clear on this part, but I think somewhere we have some donation cards and, and those are going to go around the room and we're asking tonight for sacrificial giving for the future of our church and for the future of of this amazing amazing school and once you fill out those cards and, and look um, no gift is too small and trust me no gift is too large <laughs> So uh, once you once you filled out those cards, then someone will come by and um, pick those up. And I just want to thank you to everyone who is investing in this school, who is investing in in our children's future. And uh, I want to thank you all for spreading the word. Please continue to spread the word about St. Mary's and the incredible work that is happening here. Thank you all very much. Lady of Pro Life. Wow. Um, <laughs> I'm Heidi Altman. <laughs> I'm a hometown girl. I used to go to St. Mary's. <laughs> hey, you know, humility is the first step to sainthood, right? Um, but thank you. I, and this is the part where I get to get to kind of wrap it up. I'm, I'm the cheerleader, and tonight's been all about celebration and inspiration. And I want to thank Mrs. Abbott for all her inspiration in rooting us back in of why, the reason why we're here and blessing Texas and us <laughs> with, with that call to ministry and to live that meaningful, purposeful life. And that is what we want for all of our kids. And I know it's what you want for our children and for our church. And thank you, Abby, for rallying the troops to action. Because it does take action. Um, there's no standing still around here, I'm telling you. And I want to thank you for being here. Because you aren't standing still either. You're showing up. You're supporting our kids. You're bringing your kids to this beautiful school. You're decorating tables. You're chaperoning for dances. You're joining our team as teachers. 
and and it's just beautiful to see the work that God is doing. You know, cultura vitae means the culture of life, and St. Mary's is brimming with life right now, right? And that's a view. That exists in all of you, each and every one of you. And your inspiration for our children, you are models for them. Because you showed up tonight and you are supporting them. And it's not just our high school. You know, this, this high school, we, we brought it back after 54 years. The last high school here was, was the last high school graduating class here at St. Mary's was in 1966. So this dream, this vision, it was ours. It was yours. Parents who, where are our parents? I want all our parents to stand up. If you're a parent of St. Mary's kids, stand up right now. There you go. And if you're a grandparent of a St. Mary's kid, or an aunt or an uncle, stand up. Or your children live here in the past. Stand up. There we go. Look at this. Isn't that awesome? This, there we go. Finish. This is the beauty of our faith. This is the beauty of the church. This is the beauty of community, because that's how God means us to live. It, it's how he means us to raise our children. And it is such an honor and a joy that I get to spend every day with our children. And I know that Mrs. Bennett is going to call out my kids if they're acting wrong. <laughs> and I do the same for her. And, and that's, that's awesome. And that love that we have for what's behind us and what lives in our homes is what moves us. It's what's moving you now to show up. It's what's moving you to help us build and expand and do what we need to do, what God is calling us to do for our kids. And it is something special. It is something special. The miracles have been abundant in this place these last six years that I've been able to be here. They were here in the past, and it's our job to carry on the legacy of 125 years of Catholic education right here in Taylor. How amazing is that? Now, I've always said, if you can't have fun in a pre-K-3 through high school school, I don't know where you're going to have fun. And it's true. There is joy each and every day. Even when we cry a little bit or throw some temper tantrums, I'm talking about me, not your kids. Um, uh, <laughs> even when that happens, it's joyful. James says in, the, in his, his, his letter, count it all as joy. Start a high school in a pandemic, count it as joy. <laughs> Figure out how to learn to put 269 kids in another possibly 50 to 100, count it as joy. <laughs> we'll do it together. Because that's how Taylor and St. Mary's have always been. I'm a fourth generation Taylorite. And my parents and my grandparents did the same thing you're doing here tonight. They showed up. When the church needed painting, they showed up. When money needed to be raised to fix the roof on one of the school buildings, they showed up. God, that's special. There's in the complacency of this world and, and the stagnation sometimes of just, oh, I'm just walking through life. No, that's not here. That's not here. And, and you all are such great role models for those kids all those kids, not just the high schoolers. Because you built them, and then they help build the younger ones. Because the younger ones watch them. And they go in and read to the, to the little ones, to the kindergartners. They give high fives to the fifth graders. They cheer them on when they're playing football. That's pretty cool. That's a family. There's no place like this. God means for this to be how it should be for us and for our children. And I thank you so much. Give yourself a round of applause. <laughs> now there's a few other people I want to be sure we thank. Um, 
Uh, first is our wonderful teachers and staff who have worked so hard behind the scenes tonight to make this happen. Um, we have, where are all our teachers? Can they all come out? And Kim and Tessa, all of our staff. Danny, where are you? We need everybody. Come on. Okay. It takes us all. Our high school teachers also teach middle school. And then we have Mr. Gensick who teaches the teachers and teaches the kids and teaches us how to handle the technology. He's put together all this tonight with our AV and sound equipment. Thank you, Mr. Gensick. <laughs> who keeps us going in the library and in admissions, and she also tells me how many more buildings I'm going to need <laughs> to handle our growth. So thank you, Mrs. Mohawk. <laughs> uh, Mrs. Street, where is Tessa? Snapping pictures, marking it all down, taking care of our archives so this 125-year legacy can be documented and we can celebrate it um, for years to come by looking back on all the memories that you have provided us. Plus, you advertise, you run our, our development. Thank you so much. You're amazing. Trey Bowles, another behind-the-scenes man. He's one of our graduates, and I love it when they keep coming back, right? They just keep showing up. Miss Altman, what can I do? <laughs> oh, I've got something you can do. <laughs> so, Trey, we're so happy you're with us. Thank you. <laughs> Dr. Mr. and Dr. Mrs. Stewart, awesome job. Thanks for leading the help. Rolling, so way to go. All our teachers, we've got Mr. Chris Fordman, Wade, there's our aerospace engineer. <laughs> Who else am I missing? Oh, we got Patrick Kyle, Wade. Patrick Kyle was one of those dreamers with me. Um, when we, we first talked and some of the parents, you all showed up and said, we want a high school. We don't want to leave this behind in eighth grade. Where else are we going to go? We want a high school. And we all met together, and Patrick was one of the ones who helped, helped dream with me. And he's still dreaming, and I love that about you. So thank you, Patrick. And you're an amazing teacher for our children. And basketball coach, and you, your swim coach. I mean, all these wonderful hats. But that's what it takes. And we all know how it works. And it is such a blessing, and I thank you. Where are our kids? Can I have all our students come out that, who are here? Go grab them. Pull out that cafeteria. That is, as Abby said, the future of our church. And they have such an impact on campus. The little ones look up to them. And I know you're proud of them as your children. So come on out. Let us Thank you. Thank you for giving of your time, your talent, your treasure. Thank you for giving your prayers. I mean, that is so powerful. I, I can't tell you how many answered prayers have happened on this campus. Miraculous things. Have I told you the billboard story? There's an answered prayer. I was meeting with Ms. Bohaj, Mr. Yezik, and Ms. Street one day, and I said, you know what? This is ridiculous. There are people in Hutto, eight minutes away, who do not even know that we live here, that we're here. They have no idea what is going on. We need a billboard. They just looked at me, and they're like, a billboard? Like one of those big things on the side of the highway? You know how much this cost? I'm like, we'll find out. How much does that cost? We need to have a billboard, even if we can afford it for two weeks. Let's just do it. Something needs to happen. Or else I'm going to go paint on the side of the building. The St. Mary's is this way. Head east, okay? I mean, I, I was like, we've got to have a billboard. 
So they found out how much the billboard was, and it turns out it was like 10000 to to get it and get the sign, and then another 5000 each month. And I thought, okay, well, then we just need to pray for a billboard, because <laughs> um, that money ain't coming <laughs> out of the stone that are, you know, the gravel driveway. So we, we're just going to pray. Let's pray for a billboard. Well, the very next day, I get a phone call from a former parent. He and his, his children were active here about 10 years ago. They moved out of state. And he'd call to check up every once in a while, so I thought he was just calling to check up. And he says, hi. Okay, so I called to check up. But I also called because um, I need to ask you something. So I have this property outside of Taylor. And I want to put it on the market, but the city is saying that I've, I've got this, I've got to kind of fix it up if I'm going to, you know, put it up for sale. And I said, okay, fix it up. What, do you want us to, like, service project? We'll go and mow? What you need? He goes, well... I have this billboard <laughs> on this property. I kid you not, this happened. I have this billboard on this property, and it's kind of run down, so I've got to put something on it. I want to give it to St. Mary's. I want you to be on it. Amen is right. So we have a billboard. <laughs> and it didn't cost me $15,000. you do here that's what you do when you come and sub and help out in the library or or come and give to our portables that we're going to fix up we'll make them look nice we made this gym look awesome <laughs> so i just wanted to witness to that that it matters your prayers matter these people matter they do so much good and we are the workers in the vineyard. And thank you for continuing to show up. Well done. Well done, good and faithful servants. So if you eat your dessert, great. If you haven't, stay and relax and visit and finish. And we're, we're just here to enjoy. Celebration and inspiration. Yes. And there's more wine. Excellent. Thank you, Dr. Stewart. So this is where we really have start to have fun. This is how we do it in Taylor. We work hard, we play hard, okay? And I just want to thank everyone for being here. Uh, for all of our wonderful sponsors, thank you. And it's just been such a joy to celebrate this entire school. And, and to know that we have this beautiful capstone here as a high school that, that our, all of our kids can kind of see their future in. So thank you so much. And Father Keith, would you close us in prayer? Thank you. One last thing, you, you may have noticed the art in the back, or if you didn't, there's student art in the back. And um, anyone who wants to take some home, we just ask for a donation. You can make a small donation, a big donation, whatever you like, and take a piece of art home with you. Our students here, the ones you met earlier, the ones who've been serving tonight, are the creators of, of that art. Uh, one of the hallmarks of our, um, our model of education is that the fine arts are not electives, they are required courses. Every student takes art, every student takes music, every student takes drama. They complain that they take dance, but they'll thank us later. By the way, they're all going to teen night, a couple of dance hall. Hmm, I wonder how they can do that. So, on your way out, feel free to look at the art and take some home with you. Sorry. Absolutely. Thank you. I'm glad you mentioned that. And then one more thing. We have some teachers who are joining us as guests, too. So Stephanie Klensendorf, Betsy Hine. Where are our other teachers? Stand up. I want to, I want to know, make note of them, too. There they are. to know as well. So, Father King, thank you. Please close us in prayer. Let us pray. In the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Ever present and gracious God, you bless us in so many ways. We give you thanks for the blessings of this evening and the gifts that, have, that, gifts that we bring forward for the greater glory of you and for the building up of this school at St. Mary's. We ask you to continue to bless and guide all the students here, all those who have come through, and all those who will, and all those who are currently here. 
We give you thanks for the blessings you bestow upon us. Continue to watch us all over us all. Keep us safe and may we have a safe journey home. And we pray, glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. May the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. I would also like to make mention of our wonderful musicians tonight. Our director of sacred liturgy, music, at the at Saint Mary's Saint Mary of the Assumption Catholic Church, Luciano Lorenzo. He also directs our choirs at the middle school and high school. There he is. And then and then Abigail Colmar, who is our director of music at the school and our music teacher, and she was our flutist tonight. So well done. We thank you for your time. Please feel free to get up and mingle and enjoy. We thank you all tonight. Have a safe trip home.